<clears throat> okay, then we are live. Selim, you have the ground. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. So we start now? Yes. Hi, hi everybody. Um, thank you very much to be uh, today uh, for this uh, presentation. Okay, and thank you for the Stadium, festival you have for the inviting me to have uh, okay. Thanks a um, to participate and enrich the discourse about uh, virtual reality and implementations of uh, virtual reality in different fields yes. and how hi, this um, create new archives. Um, um, uh, it's uh, the structure of this um, presentation will be as following. Uh, I have the instruction to have 40 minutes um, to, to present um, um, my project. Um, we're going to talk about it right now. And then we have uh, the rest of the time, almost like 20 minutes to, to, to for Q&A and an open um, exchange with you guys. So thank you again. Um, I decided to um, kick off this topic with um, based on a work of mine, um, which is uh, Afro Roots. Uh, and I think you will realize how this work um, has no pretension to be the best piece of VR, but um, in the opposite, uh, this piece or this work is a trigger uh, or uh, to, to, to make us think about how the representation and how uh, archive can be built use, using the new medium. Uh, you guys, I think now uh, you are quite familiar with VR and some of you uh, already implemented in their practices. So um, I will uh, quickly uh, kick off with the Afro Roots just to make a quick presentation. I, I, I got in touch with virtual reality in 2014. Uh, in a previous project uh, of a guy, a photojournalist uh, called Karim Ben Khalifa, and uh, the project was called The Enemy. And for me, it was a really um, a starting point to, to think and how to, to implement VR in fields that are very familiar to me, which is uh, documentary filmmaking and the music. So um, I will share my screen with you guys and I will go through uh, some templates. Uh, sorry, we made some tests for the videos. The sound doesn't work, so I'll go quickly, wrap up uh, quickly with my voice as a description. <clears throat> so. Uh, are you seeing? Now we see. It's visible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, uh, um, in 2015, I... Um, I started to, to explore a little bit the fields of uh, uh, music and culture and heritage, um, starting from my hometown, Tunisia, where I realized that there is uh, plenty of things to document, but also to enlarge it in for, for, for different uh, other countries. And Afro Roots is a, is a VR experience uh, based on um, music. So it's a journey through different music of people who have been displaced uh, from the African continent to other places. So um, that was also a very starting point for me. I don't know if you guys know what is that. Um, this is the door of no return. It is a door uh, which is in the island of Gore in Senegal. And um, all slaves that has been deported to the new world in the US and uh, South America have been transiting by this uh, door. That means every person who passed by this door will never come back again. For me, as a storyteller and documentary filmmaking, it represents a, a highly dramaturgical key point to document the world, but also to, 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 to connect the dots of a history, uh, of a past, present, and future. So um, as dramatic, as tragic is the journey of those slaves from Africa, I think this place is for me um, was a starting point to, 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 to emerge or to immerse myself into that history that, that is in my eyes not well represented and very, um, very, very, very linked to negative images. So my um, my studies and my field research brought me 
to map somehow where is the African diaspora in the world. So um, I encountered so many problems to find uh, local archives, especially in the African continent, where there is very little uh, archive, written archive from the perspective of those Africans who have been deported or by local academicians or intellectuals who wrote something. Um, it is a very um, chicken egg issue because in the same time, you can uh, you can see that there is a lot of documentation, but it's well um, conserved in Western bibliotheques, universities, and it's always from the perspective of European or Western people. Then it, for me, it was a huge hurdle to, to really make a, a body of work based on those documentation. So, so, so I, 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 I I could, despite all, identify three um, uh, axes or three blocks of where the diaspora that has been deported with, within the, the, the slavery legacy uh, to from the African continent towards the world. So I found that there was a, a trans-Saharian journey going from sub-Saharan Africa to the north of Africa, where through the caravans, um, millions of uh, sub-Saharian have been deported there and they transported with them their heritage and their culture. Uh, there is another act which is the most known one because Hollywood took over and really represented in several Hollywoodian scenarios like Amistad, which is the trans-Pacific one, especially to Brazil, which was uh, the key uh, or the entry door of millions of um, uh, slaves and then uh, it spread to, 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 to the Caribbean and reached uh, Northern America. And there is one uh, trajectory which is toward Asia and especially to the Arabian uh, Peninsula and uh, India, which is uh, very less documented, uh, which is the trans-Atlantic um, uh, one, uh, tr sorry, trans-Pacific one. So uh, in North Africa, I could identify some groups and could, uh, communities uh, which are carrying this memory uh, of uh, slaves and uh, they are representing that and um, celebrating it until today. Uh, the most known one is the Gnawa culture, uh, which is uh, a mixture uh, of uh, sub-Saharan um, music, uh, which has invaded North African culture and created uh, very beautiful syncretism. So I've been in those uh, ceremonies and uh, I, uh, I really was mesmerized by the narrative power of those ceremonies. You can, I will show you so quickly some, uh, some visuals and some representation and some, just in order to have some aesthetic. So as you can see, it's a, uh, it's a, do you hear me guys? It's okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We hear. Okay. As you can, uh, you could uh, see quickly, uh, it is a, a multimedia expl explosion <laughs> by a sense. So it is dance, rituals, colors, music, instrument, oral tradition. And for me, it was mind blowing because I couldn't capture that only with video. Um, and uh, and and I, I and I so what I ask myself um, so many times: what is the best way to, to to capture this this explosion? How what's the best way to tell this story within this ritual? How to make this um, this this manifestation uh, speak for itself, but also tell a story that is rooted in the past and transmitted in the present, and for most likely going to be perpetuated in the future. Um, so then I decided to go to Brazil and uh, in Brazil, of course, in Salvador, Bahia, um, I immersed myself for weeks long 
and I discovered that there is uh, that the slaves that has been transported they also took with them only their culture deeply rooted in their subcultures and that has been very well conserved and transmitted to the to the next generation and of course as any alive entity it embraced the local culture and created a very very beautiful and magnificent aesthetic and also a local culture called candomblé which is an african uh, system uh, but also by some extent it, it is a, a, an axe of identity for those uh, deported or uh, or slaves that has been uh, displaced to 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 north africa uh, to uh, to uh, to Brazil, sorry. Um, I I visited those ceremonies and I found a lot of similarity with the first uh, ceremony or ritual I I, I lived in in North Africa. So um, I will show you also quickly uh, some visuals to to have an idea. This is in Brazil, right? Yes. So, yeah. So, uh, as you can see, uh, as you can maybe um, feel that there is also a lot of similarity and the same codes and 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 uh, representation is there. So for me, it was obvious that the link is there, but I was still a little bit lost in how to to tell the story uh, and how to to collect those pieces of puzzle into in a coherent uh, narrative. Um, I I make it a little bit quick so. Because we can also later um, go more deeper into VR and the implementation of VR. Uh, straight after that, I decided to go also to 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 India. I was lucky to 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 have a grant from uh, from uh, a foundation for a research trip to India, and I went to India, encountered uh, the a community they call they call themselves the Siddhis, and those are uh, African who um, who. Uh, went to india 700 years ago uh, the story of those communities very 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 in one hand beautiful of course but also uh, very mystic and, uh, and and it's a piece of storytelling purely uh, storytelling and i was quite uh, shocked that there is a lack of documentation of this issue of of this community and um, and I found very little archives regarding the community of city. They are in northern uh, India in a place called Gujarat, and um, they are really ha they have real strong sense of community. And um, and uh, I let you see some visuals also. Those are photographs.
Selim, can I ask a question while this uh, video is ongoing? Sorry? Can I ask a question also when while this video is ongoing about this video also? Can I ask a question? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, do you know for how many years have they been there? 786 years. Wow, okay. <laughs> This was uh, an annual meeting of all uh, Afro-Indian. Uh, they meet once a year and they celebrate the guru called Baba Gore, which is the, the founder of the Sidi community who traveled from uh, Sudan to uh, current Sudan to, to, to India after a dream he had. So uh, if you believe it or not, it's, uh, it's there where, you, where, where, where reality is melting with, uh, with fiction. And in terms of storytelling, it is uh, just mind blowing to 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 see how this narrative could uh, subsist uh, so long, and uh, it's the cardinal of uh, representation uh, for this community. So, uh, so yes, thank you for seeing that. Now uh, I can I can dive again into this project. So you could see, guys, that. Um, the the, the 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 foundation of this project is to actually connect the afro diaspora heritage and also create new archives um the the the, the experience is actually very simple i try to 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 compose it uh, as simple as uh, as possible and uh, after visiting the three communities uh, i realized that virtual reality is the best medium to put it all together and to tell those three uh, chapters in, a, in, in one coherent uh, project. As you begin the experience, you will encounter three uh, main characters from uh, each uh, community. One's from uh, Northern Africa, one's from uh, Brazil, uh, and one from, uh, from India. They will have the this, 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 this instrument of music in front of them, and you as a user, you are free to choose one of them. So once you choose your character, you will go three steps, uh, very simple. So first of all, you're gonna choose one character and then it's gonna fade out and one character will start with his voice to uh, present you the community, give you some background and uh, information about where we are, what are the story and who he is and why he's doing that, what is the meaning of this music and the sense of communities. And then you will find yourself totally immersed into the ritual. After experiencing five to seven minutes being totally in this explosion of senses, you will come back to the main menu and choose another character and it goes so on. So you have three characters, three stories, three rituals. Um, you have here some samples and, video, uh, and, and, and uh, visuals about the, the three ceremonies, which is the Gnawa one in North Africa, the Candomblé in Brazil, and uh, in Ratanpur, Gujarat, you have the, the, the city uh, uh, ceremony. Um, I, I think that VR in that sense uh, was, uh, was a great tool to, to, to capture all those mediums in the, in, in the same time, because um, you can film it in video, you can capture sound, but those ceremonies are alive memory forms that are speaking, as I said, for the present, for the past, and most likely for the future. So it is experiences or it is manifestation that has to be linked to, 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 to really feel the power of it and to understand the history behind it. So um, I think in that sense, uh, if you try to, to, to see it as an anthropology tool, I think VR could be a, a game changer in that sense. If you make a quick uh, step back uh, into the history of cinema and documentary, we see that actually in the 60s or 70s, there were, there were like a lot of attempts to, to, to document the world and to film 
um, manifestations, um, human beings and ceremonies and, uh, and culture around the world. If I were just uh, going to mention one person, which is for me very important, is Jean Rouch, who really documented uh, Africa and different uh, uh, cultures um, in a very honest way. And I think the key, if we pretend to create visual documentation and anthropological document, is to choose the right distance to your subject, not too far to lose uh, objectivity and not too close to, uh, to to not create a kind of invasion of the reality or not or not to, to to retouch the reality or manipulate the reality and in that sense my my job in this project was exactly to choose the right place to put the 360 camera so um of course those places and those um, um uh, areas uh, that that I had luckily the opportunity to access to were uh, in some cases sacred, in other cases uh, really um, uh, hidden, uh, but also you need time and trust in order to, 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 to see those uh, manifestations because they are kind of threatened or they represent uh, a kind of intimacy for these communities. So accessing those spaces, those spaces and being able to, to capture that um, as the discrete as a 360 camera could be was a perfect formula for me. Um, VR in that sense allowed me to, 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 um, to, to put all those stories together and to um, kind of design an experience where we have a link between the three chapters when we have an organic link, which is through the oral tradition, through the music. If you listen to the music from North Africa and Brazil and India, you will feel that there is a hidden story. There is an invisible story hidden through that. And, um, and luckily, I've been able to, 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 um, to capture this and to put it in a way that is, um, it's, it's, it's over. It's becoming a document that, that, that is saved that is preserved and could be um, at any time uh, experienced and not seen and consumed so uh, in that sense the vr is allowing us to go a step further in the spectrum of authenticity and allowing us to capture and translate in a more rich contextual fabric so um so, so vr in that sense was a, a real game changer to 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 tell those uh, those those stories. Um, I can show you quickly the trailer of the project. Uh, of course, there is no sound, but I can show you some uh, some of the some impression uh, documenting the process and how I went through that. This is during the shooting.
Here I'm explaining the, the, the process. We have the user, choose a character. And this is exactly what you're going to see uh, in the headset. So, so yes, um, just to conclude with that, um, after making the first prototype, um, I decided to, to bring the prototype and bring it back to those communities and have this important feedback from there. And so uh, in Morocco, um, the, 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 the master of music told me that, I, that he always dreamed about that and he always knew that you have brothers and sisters on the other, the other side. In, in Brazil, I had a very funny comment and uh, that we are, we don't need a passport anymore. So, and uh, in India, I had the feedback saying, this is our music there. Um, of course, the, the project uh, is almost finished now and explained as a multi-user installation, but also as an app to be uh, experienced uh, uh, with a gyroscope on smartphones. So um, basically this is the, the, main, uh, the, main, the main project that I based my work exploring VR and how anthropology could benefit from this uh, medium and how uh, those three chapters of story and how to capture, how, how I could really document those manifestation and, and, and really um, package them as a, as a piece of archive um, that's going to last as long as uh, the digital world exists. So, uh, so far, I think I'm, 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 I'm over with the, uh, with the presentation. I think there is plenty of things to be, um, to be debated and shared and discussed with you guys. So thank you. And uh, questions. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm also opening my camera. So I guess it's also kind of uh, an archiving of the oral history, right? Yes, it is uh, a way to to counterbalance uh, the lack of uh, written archives uh, on the global south, where the, the the issue of access is really hard. I uh, have been really looking for any kind of um, documentation uh, in, in university, uh, in, in Ghana, in Morocco, in South Africa, and I got very little uh, content, uh, substantial content uh, from the perspective of African themselves. And uh, But on the other hand, in Europe, uh, Oxford, uh, Paris, uh, and all those museums, I, I got a lot of things, uh, which for me uh, represent a, a big problem because uh, there is a need of reappropriating the narrative, but at least to make it shareable, to, to make it accessible for artists like me or all the people from the global south to, to benefit from it, to create based on that and not to really run behind those uh, closed jails. So uh, for me, the oral tradition was, uh, uh, was a saver for me because those tradition that transmitted from generation to generation and they're no, never gonna be lost. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a matter of how to access this community and how to take the best out of it because a ceremony is a crystallization of everything, of an oral tradition, of music, of uh, instrument, of uh, behavior, of stories, of myth, of um, of uh, everything, so so I could spend more time to go on case by case by case, but a ceremony for me was um, really crystallization, uh, a sum up 
of uh, all this memory and how this memory um, is still there, still lived and experienced and transmitted and represent a circle of identity um, for those communities. Yeah, it's it's a, like a new way or a very fun, fun fun breath of archiving in a sense. I mean, I haven't thought that way. So um, maybe we can start with the, some questions also. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah please. Can, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, please. Uh, don't for hesitate. Presentations. Uh, I, I would like to ask. Actually, um, did, did you did you direct the stories of these characters? Uh, for for instance, that uh, like uh, the, like the questions that you have already, or it's like a very, um, I mean, in a sense, you, did you have your questions ready, or it's just the time that you spent there, or uh, like an ethnographic uh, mm -hmm. point of view? Yeah, it is a very important story. So uh, important question. Sorry, because. Uh, the starting point was no concept, uh, just diving into those people and feel uh, what are those uh, ceremonies are representing. Uh, personally, I grew up in Tunisia and kind of this this uh, ceremony and music, either weddings and 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 and. But um, I never uh, push my thoughts so far and to to think. Is beyond the folklore, beyond the the music. What are these uh, uh, events and those spaces represent for the community? What 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 the foundation of that? Why are they still perpetuating that? And um, I just could could answer just by 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 making those rituals and ceremonies. It's a way to say we are here. We exist. We didn't disappear. Our story is still there and matters, and we know it, and we have it. So for me to access those 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 spaces was like um, a, a challenge to make those communities believe me that I'm not here to take it. I'm here to enrich it. I'm here to try to connect it with other. Uh, 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 snippets or pieces of story that are interconnected but still invisible and the kind of restoration uh, of, of this story which is a uh, hundred percent on the same level of, uh, of a narrative uh, and uh, basically I, I said what if I put a 360 camera there what, what's gonna happen you know uh, what is what's going to happen for a user to to suddenly see people um, dancing, doing rituals, singing, um, and 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 feel the the drums and the instrument and the vibes, the, the pre uh, the pre ceremony and after the ceremony. H how is it, you know? And beyond the folklore and beyond the exotization of of those person and um, it is it is a very as a director it is a very heavy task I put on myself because uh, I had some feedbacks from people saying that it's a sacred place you cannot put people inside of them like this but I think we should look beyond that because as long as it stays closed uh, we're gonna perpetuate the folklorization and uh, exotization of that so people would come and will have from very far a camera and try to document it and but the 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 distance of understanding between public and those people will will stay that will remain the same so to immerse users inside of them is the way to 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 make them understand the history yes thank you so much uh Hi, Selim again. Uh, thank you for your presentation and amazing stories. Uh, I would like to talk about preserving stories to the future in a technology way. Uh, you know, people pass their thousands of years of traditions from generation to generation in a kind of celebrations. And I would like to ask you a question. How can we protect uh, 360 degrees in the future? And uh how uh can you protect the projects and the people's stories you have mm -hmm. done today for the future mm -hmm. 
Well, I mean, uh, I think I think that that uh, this question is beyond uh, my uh, responsibility as just as an artist or filmmaker. I think this project could fit perfectly into mediatex, uh, uh, institutional mediatex or bibliotex, museums can feed perfectly uh, universities, can feed perfectly um, curriculums of uh, history. Uh, could be teached, can be used as as a teaching material, and uh, in, in 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 schools or university can be also feed uh, music musicology uh, departments. Uh, it could be embedded into into gaming. It could benefit a lot in a different forms to 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 be used as an education tool, but also to to be preserved as as a new archive. Uh, if you go on a media tech and you want to know what is Gnawan, what is Candomblé, and what is Damal, uh, instead of watching a video, you can put your headset and you know exactly what is that. Instead of hearing about it, or which is important, but instead of just hearing about it or reading dry uh, 300 books around it, um, you can experience it. You can leave it. Ah, this is it. So the, 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 the fact of experiencing something uh, instead of reading about it or instead of just watching something about it or to leave it. I think uh, it makes a huge difference. And um, and now I think there is the, the, the public debate and um, how to uh, reinvent archives and how to, to, to preserve those uh, cultural, uh, um, cultural practices and narratives of the world um, without disfiguring them without um, putting on them a folkloric stamp or exo exotic uh, stamp, not just people ha 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 dancing, but to 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 use it as a as a step stone to studies or to develop it and nourish it and build on them uh, uh, a real uh, foundation of of anthropology or a real foundation of uh, of education or, or 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 take it just from there and develop it, you know. So I think in one hand, it could just to, to come back to your important question, it could be a standalone for itself as, as, an, as an experience, as a, as a project into festivals, online, browsable, etc. But it could be taken also by institution uh, like MediaTek's institution, Institute of Archives and have a sample of that. I mean, with this project, I can have like the next 10 years work, you know, going to the Amazonian, going to Eskimos, going whatever. I can have like a, it could be uh, duplicated in, in many, many, many forms and represent a, a new way of archives, a new way of experiencing the world. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? And also, uh, while waiting, if there is any question, uh, I'm also, I, I wondered, I mean, uh, the history of uh, the first slide that you showed, the, the roots that, uh, yeah. are these roots that you, you chose the roots or the, these are the main roots that uh, have chosen from yes. the Africans? Uh -huh. Yeah, it, it is a very good story. Actually, I said this is access. Like there was one X, like one trajectory that has been uh, in the context used by by caravans, and then when 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 Portuguese discovered more routes, they they've been flourishing human trafficking with different hubs like Cape Verde, Salvador Bahia, the Caribbean, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there is one in the Pacific, one crossing the desert, and there is the other one that is also based on. Uh, uh, business and 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 by some extent then there was like the layer of colonization through the 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 pacific the arab world etc etc so i choose to 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 have this as a this project as a, a kind of a model of course there is a lot of other tradition like in cuba there is in southern iran uh, afro iranian with an amazing story there is in pakistan uh, there is uh, um, uh, everywhere in Mexico, so uh, there is those kind of small sub narratives 
uh, of course, it could be extended to those uh, to those other tradition where there is a lack of documentation, of course. But I choose to stay on uh, on on those axes as a model, um, and 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 base my all my research and representation on 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 the. On, on those uh, on those axes, of course. Uh, after choosing the characters, I, I, I said, "Look, if we have captured already the the ceremonies, it would be nice to have a story. If we, it would be nice to to, to package that uh, into an experience. And for an experience, we needed to put some storytelling. So uh, we we gave the the voice to to those uh, characters." And tried to 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 have their story to to immerse us in those points in Bahia, in Tangiers, in uh, Ratampur, uh, just to to introduce us because some people don't have, don't know those stories, don't have the ability to understand it. Okay, jazz music, it's nice, blah blah blah, and that's it. But I don't know where is jazz coming from. You listen to reggae music, it's fun, it's high, it's cool, but once we push it a little bit further into history foundation the why this beauty where is beauty coming from it's coming from suffering too so why don't we highlight also the story the background of it as a part of you know awareness because uh, just an, I'm opening a little bit uh, small remark with the project I've been able with the, thank my producers in Berlin to um, to go with a prototype and and try to identify the audience because I, I knew that this kind of project would be a little bit complicated to to, to fund, especially for uh, Western audiences who maybe don't have this background or, or the interest to, to to know where is this music coming from. We like samba and that's it. I don't care where it's coming from, but. We took this project in different workshops in Ghana, Cape Verde, uh, Niger, uh, and, 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 and took a sample of people and just put them in a headset and try to have their feedback. And we realized that the, they totally identify and understand what it's about. It's, it's not about technology anymore. The technology disappeared. It's the medium doesn't matter. What is important is I see my representation and I see my story there. And I see something, a document that is important for me, which I understand. And for me, it was for me, for me a, a, a revelation that, that this project is on the good path. And I uh, don't have the pretension to be the messiah for, those, for this. But I, I, I was thinking in terms of project, the project is round, it works, uh, you know? So it is very important when when we do a VR project to 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 find out which what is your audience, what do you want to do with that? Entertain, educate, uh, explore a medium, ex explore a topic, uh, because it's it's the, just the beginning of the immersive era. Uh, we cannot say that we all experts on that. We we do work that is. Uh, uh, corresponding to our uh, aspiration and our uh, waitings from, 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 from our art and what moves us. And, uh, and if, we, if we think that is important to implement it, so we do it. Uh, so it is all experimental. Uh, I mean, we are since almost four, year, four years on this project and we just now finish it, the final prototype that has worked perfectly. I was going and to it, ask how many yeah. how, for how long did it take? I was just going to ask. Yeah, it took forever, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I wasn't expected to to have uh, like this. But uh, I, sometimes I say to myself, look, those tradition lasted over seven hundred years, <laughs> and you want to do it in one one year. Why don't you be just patient and give it the time? But also, I think it was good also to have time because many things came after. Um, uh, in one hand, the technology involved, so we could add a lot of things, some interaction, we could work on the sound design because it is a sound experience. Uh, it is really a, a sound experience. You are too, totally, all your senses are immersed in, in that. You could dance, you could, uh, uh, wow, you could explore a, no, a new world. But on the other hand, we, we could see that through this process, the, the main, the main, um, uh, 
I'd say the main purpose of the project uh, is is absolutely on time. Look what is happening in the world. Black Lives Matter. Uh, all, all, the, all, all the rising of African intellectual and global South claiming narrative, etc. So I was, wow, it is a project on time. It's still racism in the world. Still, black people are murdered because just those black. And the reason for that because their story is not known. It's not represented. It's not evaluated. It's not seen as it is. It's not well, like understood from different cultures. So. So this project could be like a project that could help this process at least, you know, especially if we address it uh, to 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 really very normal someone who never heard about VR, and we want it to be accessible and easygoing and not too heavy, and and just uh, just playful also somehow because you enter you can dance and listen to music it's enough, it's just enough sometimes. We speak about VR as something that's hyper perfectionated, but if you implement into something that is already uh, um, perfectionated or already um, uh, complicated through time and spaces, it's enough just to put the camera in the right space, in the right place, and just observe. And and for me, that's why I think it is an anthropology tool by by essence because it allows you to observe within the right distance. And not to interfere and to have the respect let's say and the right distance to what you see and and that's it it could be very powerful as long as that it is like this sometimes when you try to perfectionate your installation and stuff you, you lose the sense of it you have many buttons here and here you could do wow wow and you have sounds from every places but we still are not uh, have the, the the ability to understand how VR works. Our brain is absorbing much more information, and sometimes it's too much. You know, that's why to keep it very simple and try to 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 use it as as an, an external eye that capture more, and uh, and that allow us to be in a place that normally nobody would access to, and and first of all stick to that. You know. Uh, I would like to ask your feature uh, projects. What's your feature project? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think first of all we we need to uh, to to make a good release to this one. And there is some some evolution, of course, but uh, within the COVID situation and uh, within all this mess around us, uh, I, don't, I don't I don't have. Uh, much more project. Uh, I think this is my project that I want to uh, release very soon. Okay, we've been lucky to have a, a presentation at the Berlinale 2018 as a prototype. Uh, we've been able to, uh, to, to, to show it in different conferences around the world and with the purpose to, to start a discussion like we do today and uh, not as an experience in itself. Uh, but to start a discussion about anthropology, a discuss, discussion about how to create new archive and how to conserve it, what is the educational impact on it, how it's uh, now um, uh, uh, aligned with the, with the context and the political context we live in. So just to start, to bring people to think about it. It is a trigger project. It's a, I think it could, could be an everlasting prototype. But as a future project, I don't know, maybe after this one, I will just take a piece uh, 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 of, uh, of uh, a stone I will draw on the wall. Maybe, I don't know, and it's going to be enough to, you know. The African roots, will it be uh, public, open to public? I mean, how they, uh, how uh, they or we, I don't know, how we can experience it? It will be on online or... Yeah. Well, I mean, there is plenty of, uh, of formats we've been thinking about. Uh, first of all, to make the app and it's downloadable. Uh, you know, everybody can download it and experience it on, on a smartphone or on a cardboard. Uh, ideally, it's the installation. That means venues on festivals, uh, venues on, 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 on events and festivals, etc. We've been thinking about developing maybe the sound part as it is just some, also take just the sound part and make immersive podcast. It could work perfectly just to put the headset and close your eyes and you are already there, you know, and have a kind of well, nice 
specialized and and well-designed uh, sound narration that is also an, uh, an output uh, format. Uh, we've been thinking about Exodome, which is a, just a dome you enter inside. It's like an Eskimo dome, and there is 360 projection, so you enter without everything, and you just you are surrounded by, by the story. Um, but those stuff are expensive, and uh, <laughs> but we, we will see. But there is a lot of uh, outputs uh, possible. Uh, ideally, for me, is to to have it like in some curriculums, on on history books or uh, or or with governments from African countries or European country, to to integrate it slowly, maybe into uh, the history of France, for example. Uh, or history of UK, like, you know, not to, to close the eyes to the colonial past and to use that as, you know, opportunity to, to reconcile narratives. Uh, yeah, it could, it, there is plenty of work, of course. <laughs> well, it's, it was very lovely talk uh, and also discussion. I mean, I enjoyed a lot. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry that the sound on the video didn't work, but uh, on demand, I can send you some private link. You can see mm. those videos, and the the trailer of a project is online, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, very welcome. And if people want uh, through the with the participants to to really try to implement music in their future project, I'm totally open to give some insights how to record it technically, because there is a technical, technological part that we didn't uh, uh, went into depth, but uh, had the, luckily uh, the chance to work with a very good professionals uh, in Berlin with, uh, I think, MVR, Zonke Kirchhoff and uh, Philip Wenning, who are excellent camera people and uh, really technical, technically very sharp, so we could capture uh, um, ambisonic sounds and uh, capture also um, with a with a with a high def uh, 8k uh, footage which are really uh, a rarity to have this uh, this quality uh, yes yeah, so if if you guys are interested to go in the field of capturing culture uh, creating new archive which technology to use how to process uh, I, I'm here. I, I think I uncovered some information, but I can give you some insight, experience. There, you you're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We, we, are, we are on on time, right? Yeah, that that's perfectly on time. Yes. <laughs> okay. And for uh, uh, the end of the session announcement again <laughs> so let's also we uh, will be oh, meeting... we have a holiday time huh <laughs> no 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 holiday <laughs> it's get together <laughs> time <laughs> we have a get together session tomorrow also at five uh, sorry 4 p.m ct no uh, monday Most no time. it's get together uh, no. oh, sorry, yeah, yeah okay yes. yeah yeah. yeah. Okay. Get together session uh, at 4 p.m. CET. So maybe it's it's good to talk about your, the, especially the participants, uh, what you imagine about your own projects after the speeches that we have listened to this week. That we listened to uh, three mentors this week. So uh, it it might be opened up a new discussions on your project as well. So tomorrow's uh, get together uh, will be more fun, I guess. And then Friday, we will be listening, Rachel. So again, thanks for your time, Selim. And thank thanks you very for much talk. for this opportunity. Yeah. And thank you for the participant and uh, for your future project. <laughs> and uh, thank you for the Amber Festival for this uh, yes. great opportunity too. Thanks a lot. So goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice day.